I wanted to share with you a conversation I had with a fellow from work um, on the 25th yesterday in February. And it took me by surprise that so much so that I had to ask the question I had to ask him to repeat what he said. And I've been meditating on this with the Lord this morning. And it, the depths and the profoundness of this question I have not come to yet. Nor do I think that it's possible to, to truly grasp the depth and the significance of this man's statement without the Lord doing a great work of revealing in our hearts. In other words, unless the Lord were to give us his heart and how he feels regarding this statement and its uh, overall impact on humanity, um, unless he gives us his heart for it and his understanding and how he views it and how he sees it, I, I don't think we can truly fully understand just how pervasive this sentiment and how deep it runs in man today and throughout really the ages but it seems to me that in this day and age especially here in America um, that this seems to be more prevalent and the, the question the statement, rather, was this. This gentleman at work walked by me and says, after I ask him how it's, how it's going, he says, um, Well, I'm one day closer to death. And it took me back. And I had to ask him to repeat it. And he did. And the first thing that came out of my mouth, without really just thinking, this is what came out. It says, you need to prepare for eternity now. And he didn't say anything. Didn't even look at me. Just kept walking. And this is such a picture, I think, of many people where the Lord is crying out to them. He's calling out to them. It's telling us, you need to prepare for eternity now. And so many people, they don't even look back. They don't even acknowledge. No, I don't know what the effect of my words will be to him I know I've been praying I've been I've been praying for him but the profundity of his statement I think is great I think that many Many, many, who knows how many hundreds of thousands of millions of people out there have that thought of, I can't wait till I die. I can't wait till I die. And for various reasons, I'm sure. And I just want to, to maybe discuss a couple of them. Pain. 
they're in such pain that they want to die. They're in such turmoil of heart and soul and, and mind that they want to die. They think, they believe, really it's a lie, they, they believe that in death that they're not going to suffer anymore. The pains of whatever it may be. Rejection. Self-loathing. The pain from being molested, sexually abused, or raped. So many pains. So many people are carrying around so much pain. So much hurt. And they're swimming in hopelessness and despair. I should say rather drowning in despair and hopelessness. If they could but swim, they would have hope, but they don't. They don't see a way. Except for through death. They think that in death, that's it. I'm free. But therein isn't the lie that they believe. Or maybe it's, they just haven't been told the truth. Or heard the truth. They think that in death, that's it. There's nothing. One of the great evils of secular humanism and atheism perpetuated on the people today is that when you die, there's nothing. But it's only the beginning. I've heard this once and it has stuck with me. And that is this. For those who are not in Jesus Christ, who, those in whom Jesus Christ is not Lord or Savior, that here on earth is as good as it's ever going to get for you. It's as good as it's ever going to get because once you die it's only going to get much worse the pain the hurt the hopelessness the despair is only going to be worse so bad so indescribable that a word would be fitting for it is excruciating. Excruciating is a word that it comes that means out of the cross. It was a word that they attributed to the death of Jesus on the cross. It was so painful. They didn't have words for it. It's just so bad. In hell. It is so bad, it's beyond words. So bad, beyond words. Jesus, he tries to articulate this very truth to us, and he says that it is a place where there is weeping and gnashing with teeth, a perpetual burning, a place where your worm will not die. place where if you were to try to pray a place in hell where there was people who prayed Lazarus in other words you, uh, uh, excuse me uh, the ruler prayed for water in hell as Jesus tells us in a parable but when you get to hell and if you're praying there it's too late It's too late. Hell is a real place. It is a place that 
we were not meant to go to. It was not meant for us. It's not meant for, for us. It's meant for the devil, Satan, and his, and his demons. Excuse me. Such despair and hope. Uh, such despair and hopelessness. Mark and mar the lives of countless of tens of thousands of millions. And they would want to, and many do, commit suicide. Only to be met with the... the only to have their hopes dashed and the reality is that there will be a perpetual pain and suffering in hell oh. but there is glorious news because as the saying continues, that's the bad news. The good news is, is this, is that those who are in Christ, that those who have made Jesus Lord and Savior, who have made Yeshua Lord and Savior, that here on earth, this is as worse as it gets. This is as worse as it gets here. Because after, when we die, we go to a place for all eternity where our tears are wiped away. There is no more weeping. There is no more mourning. There is no more fear. There is no hopelessness. There is no rejection. we go to the place where we'll be with the Lord the God of all creation and whose light will shine in us continually perpetually a place where every tear is wiped away So, for those who would be listening, who have had the thought, oh, I can't wait to die. I don't have to deal with this crap here anymore. Do you have Jesus? Is Jesus Lord and Savior? Do you despair? Do you feel like you're in a place of hopelessness right now? Is the pain too much for you to bear? And you just want it to stop? Are there voices that are in your head that are telling you to just end it? If you've said yes to any of those, or if there's anything that I haven't mentioned, that you can say yes to that's a that's a torment to you here and now i want to tell you of the one yeshua hamashiach jesus christ the redeemer the healer the one who has set us free his name means Salvation, deliverance, if you are so overwhelmed by your sin and overwhelmed with hopelessness and despair, hope has a name. His name is Jesus. The scripture says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. 
and those who put their trust in him will not be put to shame. Jesus tells us, tells you, tells us that all who are weary and are heavy laden with burden to come unto him and he will give you rest. He says, lay it all down, give it to me. And you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says that in order for you to be, to, to make it to the kingdom of heaven, that you have to be born again. And he further says, and it's for this reason, that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life is now. When you repent, confess your sin, and trust in Jesus with all of your heart, cry out to him, today you can enter the rest of God. Today. Eternity is not the day you die. It's the day that you trust, that you repent, trust, and hope in Jesus. It starts. Enter now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you love. That you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you, Lord. That you have been tempted and tried in all ways and you've been found sinless. Thank you that you are able to sympathize with our weaknesses, with our failings but yet have overcome. Thank you, Lord, that the punishment for our peace was laid upon you. You were bruised for our, for our iniquities. Thank you, Lord. I pray. That you would touch Lord those who are listening with your love right now with your peace Lord that they would come that those who are hurting those who are hopeless oh God that they would come and that they would lay it all down before you your word says that you are the one who daily bears our burden. Oh God, there's, they are hurting. Stretch out your hand to heal. In Jesus' name. Bondages be broken off. Depression. Anxiety. Suicide hopelessness for freedom Lord you have set them free for those who the Son has set free is free indeed are free indeed thank you Lord Jesus You are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.